Hello! Alright, so today we're going to do in a few parts the dock build that I'm doing over at Sandy Highlands back on my Isle of Awakening, just taking a break from Pewter City. So I'm trying to fit in as much as I can into the actual settlement boundaries of uh, Cerulean Step, which is Sandy Highlands, uh, for me. Um, so we are going to do little houses that are going to be peeking out from the cliff a little bit, but the main part of them is going to be in the cliff under where we have the uh, flea market um, so that it's within the settlement boundaries and to just use as much space as possible. Um, there can be some issues with frame rate if you do this in a lot of spaces, but right now here we don't seem to be struggling too much. So we want to do those Tudor styles like I did in one of the first architecture tutorials, but we're going to use the paint and make them nice and colourful and pretty this time. So the idea of the area is going to be that it's like a little trading post for small boats to bring in stock for the shops at the front of the town and the flea market. And um, we're going to do a big main dock out of wood and stuff like that um, nearer to the beach. Um, but for this small trading dock, I uh, want we'll to do something different. So we're going to do uh, some sooty silver tiles. Um, and I don't have any footage of actually laying down this, but generally you want to do it about too high from the water level for a dock. Um, and you can always add supports um, and boats and things later, but you don't want to have it directly. You can, but you don't generally want to have a big dock right on the water. That's going to be for really small docks. Um, so I would say medium to large docks have it at least one block off the water, preferably two, just to give you some room to play. Um, so we're going to have a small house for a couple of the merchants, a trading post, which isn't actually going to function, I think, as a building. Um, and then we're going to have a boathouse over on the left. So the reason I'm doing it kind of sunk in is, like I said, to keep it within those settlement boundaries. Um, but it was something that lovely wife uh, Sin suggested that I do as well. She has a really great tutorial. I'll put a link in the comments doing the same thing. So in this same vein, we're going to be building these back into the cliff for added space. Um, it helps um, where we've positioned this as well um, because only a few blocks out from the cliff is the boundary for the settlement. Um, so they're not going to use the boat shed, but they will use the house and ideally they'll go down uh, the stairs on the side as well. So I blocked this out in chalk though. I've thought about it and because we're doing the Tudor buildings really, I could block it out in the timberless wall instead. Um, it, it has the positive side of not having to go back and fill everything and you get a bit of an idea from the start, but it has the drawback of it may make it a little bit harder to actually count out the correct amount of spaces for every different type of support that you need to have up. So I've said it before, but the hardwood tile pieces all dye the same tone of a colour. So timber walls, hardwood columns, carved murals, wooden supports, all of these are going to go the same shade of a purple, white, black. So keep that in mind. Um, they do tie together really well. And for the Tudor buildings, you can make great colourful versions of that original architecture style. And I mean, there's so many different ways as well to pattern these Tudor walls. So remember, we're going to be using the infinite pieces, which are going to have that thick bottom bit, the skinny middle bit and the fancy top bit to sort of break it down simply. And then you've got your timberless, obviously, so just your stone and one that is a, a, a separate one from the infinite one that is just a line running through the middle of timbered wood. And so that middle part, the middle coloured part, um, lines up perfectly with the top of the infinite timbered wood. So you can use that to create squares, triangles, shapes. Unfortunately, diagonals are created with wooden brackets, so they don't look as neat. But we'll do some practice with that in later videos. So in my Tudor architecture style tutorial, I go into more detail about how 
these stack but just experiment um, often we do the pillars very close to the white hardwood supports but you can try doing bigger squares smaller squares on a small building like this so you're only going to have limited space but there are different ways to make things interesting the other thing is too that you can you don't have to dye everything the same color so here because everything is white and very white um, I'm going to do a carved mural but I'm going to do it blue and I feel like that's going to accent the teague tiling as well that we're going to use for the roof um, and the great thing about having this inset into the cliff is we just need to do a couple of quick layers of a wraparound roof to make it look complete all right so we'll move on to the trading post part um, before we start just remember if there's a feature you really want on a building like a clock plan ahead so if you know knowing a clock's four wide um, you want the center to be four wide six wide maybe even two wide um, but make sure you're planning for the size of the decorations you really want um, so I planned around the clock um, because I wanted that trade vibe so I made sure the center had a four wide counter so I knew that way I could go straight up from there and the clock would be centered um, now the trading post is going to be a different color um, and a different roof but it's going to be part of the same structure technically and this is a lot easier to get away with with rooms and buildings that are inset into cliffs or hidden areas um, they look like sort of two separate buildings just on the same strip um, I could have done here as well I guess a more intricate wall pattern but I wanted to keep the big spaces on the walls um, often they would be filled with windows for a lot of buildings and houses but for a trading post I thought I want to leave big areas like that for signs and a notice board um, we'll talk about signs as well in a second uh, but the roof as well just quickly like the other one is going to just be a couple of rows to fill in the gaps the gable for the clock will be a little bit harder so we'll do that in a sec so signs are unfortunately not something you can have a lot of because you can only have a maximum of six picture frames um, you can try and get creative in terms of using the uh, triptych to turn one sign into three signs but we'll do just a basic sign here for now a buy and sell sign and we're going to use a pixel alphabet to do it so usually you wouldn't do the words out of the ground like I'm doing because it's going to create a shadow uh, but I'm wanting that sort of old timey vibe and I'm hoping that when I filter it it's actually going to add to the effect but if you want a nice clean look do it in the ground level or draw the word and then raise the ground up around it. Um, in terms of the actual pixel alphabet, if you haven't done any pixeling before, just Google pixel alphabet. Find one in the images where you can clearly see each of the pixels so that you can count and replicate them. And just remember, practice makes perfect. It's easier to vary and make your own style of a pixel alphabet if you've done your own. But also there's nothing wrong with just, you know, copying the look of someone else's for when you're making a building. This is not an alphabet that I created. I really did just Google and you'll probably find the alphabet it's not far down that I use so lastly just with the alphabet it's going to be vastly different depending on what kind of sign you want these are very basic I'll try and work on some more complex ones for a video in the future but mixing and matching colors and styles is really just going to be the only way to get what you want because there isn't unfortunately any signs in the game so I'm happy with this, uh, like someone said in the comments of another video, it has a very Animal Crossing vibe. Um, so I'm going to pop them on the left hand side and I think that gives it a much more trading post vibe once we put in the notice board and we'll work on the roof now. Alright, so for the gable roof on top of the clock, the pointy roof, um, I, just say, I think gables like this are the most intimidating thing because they always feel like they don't work or they're not going to work and honestly my only advice is just to push through finish it walk away come back and then decide because they're always going to feel awkward because of the nature of these blocks so the roof here is starting from the top of the pillar um, on the outside we're just going to go up in a triangle and then bring it out one from the actual facade 
Um, we're going to play around a bit but do basically a simple middle design and then use the brackets underneath each of the wood pieces to create a smooth edge. And here, like you can see, we can actually mix. We don't need to use yellow brackets. We can mix and match colours to get a better style. So now that the roof's done, I think we can see that in this there are probably two things that I really like about this that define it, which is the cap on the top of the roof that is ropey logs and the fact that we have two yellow wooden brackets at the start of that roof and then the other two are undyed. It's not something you notice straight away when you look at it but I actually think that it adds a it doesn't make it as, look as square as I thought, if that makes sense. I actually quite like the fact that it um, brings a little bit of the yellow up into the roof, but not too much. So I think out of this design, those two things are probably the two that make it look the nicest. So even though it's a dock build, I haven't done much of the dock stuff yet. I'm gonna start doing that today. Um, the last bit of this just quickly, is inside the trading post just to give it that kind of storeroomy feel i've used shelves and what i've done is i done in the back a section of crates a section of barrels and a section of pots and i left a gap between them and then i went and put shelves down in the gaps to create that lattice effect and then i went and put uh like barrels and things like that on top of them um, I done extra shelves like you can see just in the middle. Um, shelves are really hard, they connect in sort of weird ways so it takes a little while of sort of taking them out and putting them back in um, but they tend to always connect to the farthest point so they'll connect over the top of other shelves, just keep that in mind. And that's going to be it for part one, which is obviously just getting the trading post vibe of our dock. Next part is going to be making that flat space above the water look like a dock. We're going to add elements that make it feel like a dock in a few small boats. Um, and we're going to start work on the big boat shed as well. Um, I hope to have that out in a couple of days, but like I said, I need to start working on it today. Um, so it might be a couple of days away, but if you have any questions, need any help with anything in the meantime, as always, just let me know. All right, bye. One last thing, actually, I want to do a bigger version of what I've done over on Twitter, which is my tourist days. Um, so if you have an island, nothing's too small, too simple that you want me to visit, um, send me the ID and I'm going to do like a little photo album video of my visit. So please send me anything you have. Thanks.